Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Let's hope this new setup keeps working. Got positive reviews finally yesterday. So I'm hoping you can hear me, see me, see the grid clearly. My, mind you, there's, uh, there's not a lot going on in this grid. It is a fantastic example of a minimalist grid. I mean, we have a, I suppose, a significant rule set, but it's really interesting looking. And the puzzle is by Philip Newman, who you may know his name from the gas puzzles. He does one of those every three days. So we're used to seeing genuinely approachable puzzles. Well, my understanding is this one is genuinely not approachable, and that's partly because there is a snake in it. But uh, we'll have a look at that in a moment. I do want to uh, mention, well, the Discord server this time, because this is where this has been recommended from. People post puzzles to the Discord server, and sometimes they get they become so popular and so recommended that they get passed on to us and that this is a case in point. Um, the Discord server is also where you can see Philip's regular daily work uh, on the genuinely approachable Sudoku's as well. Um, but also Patreon where Peter C. Hayward's hunt is ongoing. Our merchandise being very popular at the moment, loads going, which is great. And uh, our apps as well, which have... Uh, we haven't brought out a new one in a while, but we are thinking about that, so don't worry. Now, <clears throat> they're all on links under the video. The first link is to this puzzle, and I'm going to go through the rules now. It's called Snek is Friendly. Now, Philip and his titles, I never understand them. I presume Snek is a version of Snake. It sounds a bit like something Gollum would say, Snek is friendly. But, uh, I don't know. Um, anyway, I'm not quite sure what that refers to, is what I'm saying. But we have a snake. Normal Sudoku rules apply. All friendly cells in the grid, we will define that in a moment, form a single one cell wide orthogonally connected snake which cannot touch itself even diagonally. So this would be oops, a possible snake not touching itself diagonally but making its way through the grid. Maybe to there. That would be a snake. Um, it could be much smaller. That would be a snake as well. Anyway, um, a cell is friendly if it has a value identical to its row, column or box number. Now we need to number the rows, columns and boxes for this. So this is obviously row 1, 2, etc. The columns obviously 1, 2, etc. The boxes, well they're pretty much as you'd expect. 1, 2, 3, four, five, well, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Those are the box numbers. So if you had a, what, let's say a five in this cell, well, it wouldn't match the box number, which is box number two. It wouldn't match the row number, which is row number two, but it would match the column number, which is column number five. So that would be a friendly cell. So that would be on the snake, because all friendly cells in this grid form a snake, which is really interesting. Um, cells connected by a dot are both friendly. So both of these cells are friendly. If they're the same type of friendly, meaning they both match the row number or both match the column number or both match the box number, then the dot's white like this one, otherwise it's grey like this one. And those are the rules. We get no given digits, we just get three grey and three white dots. It's an absolutely fascinating idea. And the idea that this solves uniquely is bizarre to me, but let's give it a go. <coughs> Do try it if you fancy it on the link under the video. You'll be able to judge from the video length how hard this is perhaps and uh, I'm gonna start now let's get cracking um, well okay let's get cracking how do we get cracking with this okay we decide that since the dots are joining friendly cells all the cells joined by dots are on the snake and we are going to make our snake an angry purple snake I reckon um, and maybe I'll colour cells that aren't on the snake green. Um, for instance, this one can't be on the snake or else the snake would fork, for instance. So that's green. Anyway, <laughs> this is the most minor thing one could have done at all. Um, okay, for these cells that are now purple, they are friendly. So this one, for instance, is in 
row nine, column one, and box seven. So that has to be a nine, one, or seven. This is a nine, two, or seven on the same principle. This one is in row seven, column nine, box nine. So it only has two possibilities. So maybe this is a good place to start on this white dot. Uh, row eight, column nine, box nine. Yes, bingo. Uh, no, maybe not. Yes, if they were referring to their column numbers, they'd both be nine, which would break the rules. If they were referring to their box numbers, they'd both be nine. The white dot says they are referring to the same type of friendly number. So that must be a seven and this must be an eight. And that is just fact. This cell is not, therefore, because of the grey dot, it's not looking at its row number, which it couldn't be anyway, it would be another eight. So it must be looking, well, it's not looking at its column number, which is number eight, so that's a nine. And we've got three snake digits already done. Now this one is in row seven, aha, which it cannot be, but it's in column four and box eight, so it's four or eight. This one is in row six, column four, box five. This is in row three, column four, box two, row three, column three, box one, row one, column six, box two, row one, column seven, box three. It's a bit of a pity that these two whites appearing in the same box was clearly helpful, but these two have two possibilities of the way they connect. Actually, we can rule out one of these. If this is Yeah, this can't be about the column number, actually. Oh, I think we're in business. Yes, this can't be about the column number, or they'd both be four. So this must be an eight. It's in row seven, which we can't have, but it's in box eight. So this must be about its box. That's in box five. This one, again, there's two possibilities here, so there should only be two here. This is Box one, so this is box two, that's a possibility. And this is row three, and that's not gonna work because you'd put a three in here as well. So that is a one, and this is a two. They can't be their column numbers. Oh, hang on, they can be. Okay, that was, oh, this is the sort of puzzle where I'm gonna make these misjudgments. Sorry, this is row three and column three. This is box two and column four, so it can't be a three because it would be referring to its row, and that would be a three. But actually, there are two possibilities still. So, uh, this can't be talking about its row, or, oh no, this is a gray dot, so they're different. Oh, okay, calm down, Mark. So, can't really do much with them. What the heck next? I mean, these all have to join up because there's only one one purple snake, but I don't know how long it is or what direction it goes. I don't know where the head and tail are, and that's really important in snake puzzles. I don't have a Scooby-Doo. Okay, what can we do next? Oh, here's a bit of Sudoku. Eight and eight in row seven and eight. The eight in row nine is here. Ah, and that is not friendly because it's not in row eight, column eight, or box eight. So that's green. And yeah, the snake, this, this must be the end of the snake in one of these cells. It can't come here and get out or it would be touching itself, which it's not allowed to do, naughty snake. So it must come here to die. It must either come in like that and die in the corner or come in like that and die there. So one of these is the end of the snake. Um, I don't know how that helps me, but at least I've found an end. Is it true to say these are all green? Yes, I think it is. Look, these are all in row seven, row eight, row nine, column seven, column eight, column nine, and box nine. So they can't be seven, eight, or nine just because of normal Sudoku rules. They're already in the box. So they're not on the snake, and I think we've just definitely found its tail, as it's a nine, I suppose, and its head is in one of these two. So suddenly we've made huge progress, 
I bet all these are green, but I can't prove it. In theory, the snake could come round there at the moment. Go out here. Um, but actually, that is progress. Okay, that's purple because the snake is coming out. This is up for a row six, column six. No, row six, box six, or column nine. Um, then it comes, this is going to be very hard to pencil mark. I mean, I'm starting to consider pencil marking cells. You know, this snake has to move on into one of those two. But if I put in central pencil marks, they'll look like it means that those are the only candidates for the box for the cell and they'd be the only candidate I would want them to mean they're the only candidates for the cell if it's purple and I don't want to use corner marks for this because I might well need them actually there might be somewhere to put in corner marks already no I can't see it it probably is but I can't see it um Ah, okay. I don't really know how to pencil mark this, but let, let's have a ponder. What do we know? We know the snake finishes here somewhere. Can it come out like, like that? There's probably something I can deduce about how these, how the snake overall must work. Yes, yes, I have thought of something. The snake visits every box because every box has its own number in it somewhere. There must be a one somewhere in box one by the rules of Sudoku and the snake must touch it. And that's true in every box. So the snake visits every box and of course it visits every row and column as well. Actually, given that it starts here, finishes down here somewhere and goes through here, that's hardly surprising. But at least we know it does go into column one. Um, Yeah, so in this box, for instance, it must visit the number nine, and it has done. In this box, the number eight. In this box, it must visit the number seven in one of those cells, because seven can't be there by Sudoku. In this box, it visits number... In this box, number six. This box, five, and we know exactly where. Okay, I figured that out, but it doesn't really help at the moment. I mean, at some point later in the puzzle, it'll probably be useful to know that one of these will be a nine because it must visit a nine in column nine. I don't know what that's doing for me. Can I disambiguate this pair? Don't see how at the moment. Oh, I've got so little to go on. Um, I just don't know whether the snake is really long, like it could go all around the houses. I mean, why not? Why couldn't it be that long? That would, I mean, I'm sure it isn't, but what on earth of reason is there that it isn't? Or is it the absolute sort of minimum size it could be, which would be something like this, wouldn't it? Oh, yes, I've been, I've, I have been sort of thinking in the background, is it likely that it just calls into some boxes to pick up the number in that box and I think it is like that being an eight or this being a one or or even that being a t no that's that it calls into this box twice at least I don't know I feel that's plausible although actually these may be the only boxes where that 
oh, and I suppose four somewhere. There aren't many boxes where that can happen, but you kind of feel it probably does. Ah, yes, yes. Yes, it is, yes. Yes. Maximum length of the snake. This is, this is important. This. Yes, right. The snake is capturing all friendly cells, but how many friendly cells can there be? Yes, this is going to be important. Right, there can only be, I'm going to allege, there can only be 27 maximum. And I'm then going to count the minimum snake path. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven. Bingo. Right. Okay, here is why I believe twenty-seven is the maximum length of the snake, and that is because how many friendly digits can there be? There can be a one in or there can be a row number in each row. That's one one cell is going to be friendly for each row. One cell is going to be friendly for each column. One cell is going to be friendly for each box. Now there can be overlaps within those. So this could be a three and therefore friendly for both row and column, but that will reduce the maximum number from 27 to something smaller. And I think we have just demonstrated that the minimum length of the snake is 27. So we cannot reduce that number. This is right, I think. So why do I think that this is the minimum path of the snake? Well, it's got to get up here. It's got to take in those two. It's got, obviously, it's got to take in all the purple cells. Now, surely the quickest way it can do that is by linking from this row six, column six, up to row one, column seven, in some form of orthogonal link, always from here only going north and west until it hits here. And I mean, that's kind of the minimum length. You could do it a different way, but you won't cut down the number of cells. Then it goes to here. Then I think the minimum way it can continue is to, ah, no. Okay, there is another way that I hadn't thought of a moment ago. I was thinking that ha row one, column six has to link up by the minimum number of cells to row three, column four. And then row three, column three to row six, column three, and then row six, row seven, column three down to this tail end. But actually, I've just thought it could do that. You see, this is the tricky sort of thing. I think this is probably still 27 cells. One, nine, 10, 11, 15, 17, 22, 24. Yes, that's still 27. So we just have to be a bit careful how we do this. I'm sure it has to from here go up to here. From there, it has to pick up this domino, then this domino, and then end in the head end, if you like. I mean, maybe we should call this the head, because um, we know where it is specifically. But that's what it does. And yes, this is the really other important learning that I nearly forgot that I'd worked out, is this can't be three, because you now can't have any of these cells that are double friendly. You can only have, this is the least friendly snake possible, let's put it that way, because we have to have 27 cells. So every cell has to be contributing only one of those nine row numbers, one of the nine column numbers, or one of the nine box numbers, and not two of them. So this can't be a three, because that would contribute two. So that's a one, and it's on a white dot, and that's box one, so this is box two. And this kind of links up we, here. We're going to have to have, well, either four cells in box seven or five, but the average number of cells in each box is going to be three, like this one. So as soon as we have a box with four or five, we're going to have to have a box with less than three somewhere to compensate, like, like maybe this one. Ah, it's interesting. Okay, maybe I can... Well, I can do something now. I can green a lot of cells. Yeah, I don't think any of the paths we've thought of can possibly go into column one until 
there. I think that's right. Because otherwise they would they would end up, if you visualize this path, it would use more than 27 cells. And I'm sure that would be the case if you did this path as well. Yeah, that, that is going to use more than 27 cells. Just checking, even though I know I'm right. 22, 20. No, sorry, that does use 20. Oh, bother. No, it's all right, because we have to go through this cell. I was just thinking maybe that's the same length, but we have to go to this cell. And if you go that way, you're using six in box nine rather than just five. Yeah, yeah. sorry. What, what I'm trying to demonstrate very haphazardly and poorly is if you went into column one before the finish, you would then use more than 27 cells. 15, 17, 19, 22, oh, 25, that is 28. That doesn't work. So, so I'm now going to say this is the only cell in column one. And since column one must contribute a one to the friendly snake, it's there. That is a one. These are all green. And this is purple. That's where the snake's tail, if you like, comes out. Now, from there to there, well, we could use any of these cells at the moment. So that's not very exciting. From there to there or there, we could use any of these cells. So I can't really touch those, but we're never going to use these cells. So they're green. Then, hang on. Yeah, that's true even of that one. We're either coming from one to five there, so we could use any of these cells, or from two to five, but that would be straight down. So these cells, I don't know, we could be using them, but we're not using these because we're then going to come from the eight to there so they're green and down here i don't think we can ever be using any of these cells because they don't come into the rectangles that we're creating from the snake path so those are all green and we've got a lot we've got half the grid colored now that's that's some advance and we have a really well, a fairly clear path of how the snake's going to move. Oh, this can't be a two. These are grey. I don't think I can remove any of those. So we also know now that we're going to have to have a two in one of these three cells because column two has to contribute a two. It's going to be in one of those. Oh, column nine has to contribute a nine, and that's got to be here, so bingo for that. One of these cells, green, we actually know something about a green cell. One of those two greens is a nine. Um, okay, this one is definitely purple, and its possibilities are row eight, forget that, box seven or column two. This is a really interesting puzzle. This is the sort of point in the puzzle, though, where I wish to some extent, that I was Simon, because he's so good at visualizing snake logic. Um, I think it's because he speaks snake, and I don't. <clears throat> one and one, so one of those is a one, and that's not interesting at all, but I do know it. Um, oh, come on, do I know anything else about this puzzle now? That connects to that in some way. Now, none of these can be eight. That could be... Okay, I am going to write candidate numbers into white cells. I've got fewer white cells than I had at the beginning. I'm going to write them in where I think they could help. And the reason I'm going to do that is because it might help me see... The reason I'm going to do it is because it might help me see some, some interesting digit things that I'm not otherwise seeing. But the reason I think I can get away with it is because I'm going to try and remember that if I have candidate numbers in white cells, those don't mean candidate numbers for the puzzle. They mean candidate numbers if the white cell went purple. So this one on that basis could be row seven, column two, or box. Oh, this could only be a two if it was 
a snake cell. So if that's purple, it is a two, because it's in row seven and box seven. So is this, so that could only be a three. This could only be a three, eight, or seven. Can't be eight. This could only be four, eight, or eight. Oh, so that could only be a four. So, oh, it's quite limited how you would... Oh, this could be a... No, this can't be a seven. It's not in box seven. Ah, you see, this is the sort of thing I could easily fool myself. I was about to say, so one of these must be a seven. Yes, it is right, actually. One of them must be a seven. <laughs> Let me try and explain why I thought I was fooling myself and then why I'm not. I thought I was fooling myself because concluding that one of them must be a seven is dangerous because I haven't actually ruled seven out of this cell. I've only ruled it out of this cell if it's purple. But the seven in box seven that is contributed to the snake has to be in one of these two cells. And there must be one. So one of those is a seven. And this isn't. Doesn't mean I can say anything about this cell. But seven is in one of those two in the puzzle, and therefore in one of these three. Um, it doesn't really do anything, but one of those is a seven on the snake. And one of these is a two on the snake. And this can only be one of those. So the snake either goes this way, two, seven, or this way, seven, two. Is that right? So this can't be a three. Because if it went this way, seven, two, it would hit a three here, and it could never come here. And if it goes this way, two, seven, this obviously isn't a three, so I don't think that can be a three. Seven's in one of those cells, two's in one of those. Oh, this is so confusing. Now, do I, this would have to come round this way. There might be a reason in this puzzle, and I could be entirely talking nonsense here, why you can't have five snake cells in the same house, meaning the same row, column, or box. So that's not right, but it's a gut feeling and I'm not sure how to prove it because theoretically this could be column three, four, five, six, and then you put a one in there. I mean, there's nothing to stop that. Oh, actually with all these being green and all these being green, five on the snake, or five contributed to the snake by column fives in one of these two cells, which we kind of expected, because we have to connect those two. Six is in one of these three, which is maybe a little more interesting. I don't know, that, I'm just speculating about this potential rule that you can't have, if you can't have five cells in a box for some reason, and I can't work out what that reason would be, but this would come out like that. And to avoid more than four in the column, it would go this way. And I think that might be right, but I don't know why, so I don't want to allege it. I'd love to work out why, but I can't think of reasons at the moment. Maybe to do with the whole length of the snake and what you can actually do with it. Okay, so we've got somewhere now. Let's... Ah, oh, this cannot be a six for a reason I mentioned a while ago. Oh my goodness, we're so long into this video. Right, this can't be a six because it would be a six in both the row and the box, and that would be using up two of the possible snake values, and the snake has to be a minimum of 27 cells. So that's a nine, and one of these two is a nine by good old Sudoku. Now, this would be a six in row six. This can't be on the snake either, because it would be, oh no, that's not true. It could be an eight on the snake, and it wouldn't be using up 
oh, this is the sort of thing I'm going to make a logical error about. I mean, feel free to point them out. And I'm not, frankly, going to kick myself too much because this is such a complicated idea. Yeah, I was about to make that green because it can't be a six. But all I'm going to do is say the only snake cell it could be is an eight. This is in row five, column nine, box six. This is in... Oh, this isn't worth doing here. I mean, those are right, uh, remembering this rule that centre marks in a white cell only apply if that cell is purple. That's my rule. So up here, how are we going to join on... I mean, in theory, there's lots of ways, but let's put in the candidates. This is in row one, column five, box two. Oh, they're all in box two, so there's not going to be that option for any of these cells. That's row one, column four. So just need, and these are in row two and box two. So they can only be their column number. This one is row three, as is this one. This is in column five, that's in column six. So those are the only purple possibilities. Ah, and my, in this box, Oh, that's quite interesting. I was about to say this blows my theory that you can't have five in a box because this has to connect to that, but it doesn't. It could rush across here and connect to this. No, that cannot, that cannot be how it connects. Right, this does blow my theory, but I'm also going to now blow the theory that the snake could come here. Because then the snake would have to go here. It would have to connect to here in the minimum number of cells. From this 8, it would have to connect to here in the minimum number of cells. What would happen in box 4? We would never get a cell in box 4. And the snake has to visit every box. A snail? Did I say we'd never get a snail? We'd never get a snake cell. Um, and so that's not right. So that does connect to that. It is going to use up 5 cells in this box. So the, my theory was nonsense. But... That's how it gets to the one. It doesn't use those cells. They're green. There's only one snake cell in box one. This is purple. That's purple, because that's the way the snake has to go. That's green. It's tucked into the fold of the snake. Now, I don't know whether it then connects to the five there. If it connected there, this snake would go around here. Oh, right. OK, but we're away now, I think, in a way. Now, what about these two cells? This is in column four, row five, box five. If that's a snake cell, it's a four. This is in row six, column three, box four, bother. Oh, and this is purple. This is in row five, column three, box four, row four, column three, box four. So there are limited candidates. Ah, here's a little trick. These two are not the only cells here on the snake. Because for it to come into this area, or say this area, it must go in and come out two cells away. So it either uses those three cells, those three cells, or indeed all four of these cells. But it doesn't do that because the only snake candidates for these two cells are four. So wherever it comes in here, it is a four on the snake, be it there or there. And therefore, the four on the snake is in one of those two cells. These cannot have a four in. This one cannot be green, uh, cannot be on the snake anymore because there's no candidate available for it. Can't be two or four now. And therefore, the snake can never get to this cell and we can wipe one out of that. Now, the four cells that the snake is going to visit, oh, well, that's purple, three or five. The four cells that the snake's going to visit, including that, must be from one, three, five, and six. Ah, and these cells also can't be two, four, which we know is in one of those, or eight. So that's a weird Sudoku seven, nine pair. This is three or six, not a seven anymore. Ah, and like, let's be careful. Okay, where I, where I write centre numbers on green or purple, they are fixed. They are proper centre numbers. But remember, where I'm writing them on white, they're only 
the only candidates if that cell goes purple. How am I going to remember this? I don't know. It's getting confusing already. So, um, okay, do we know anything about the connection up here? We know it's got to pick up a five in this column and a six in this column. Ah, oh, the one has to be in the top row and the three has to be in the bottom row. Anyway, I, I don't know what that means for the top, for the bottom row, but for the top row, it means this can't be a one because the one on the snake is in one of those two cells. So that is a three or a seven. Now that has to be different. If that was a seven, this can't be a six because of the gray dot. This would have to be a one then. If that was a three, that just means this couldn't be a two, which is not possible. So can't really pencil mark that. This can't be a 6-7 combo, but it can be any of the other three combinations. No, do I have to? I'm going to pencil mark these. So this is row 6, column 6. We know it, it, it's not allowed to be anything other than the column number then. It can't use doubles. So these are all in box 6. These are in column 3. These are in column what do I mean? These are in column seven, not three. Column eight. Ah, oh, we can't use column nine there because nine's gone. These are in row four and these are in row five. So these are the possible cells. Now, I'm going to do it for this box as well. I want to get some idea of where the snake goes and this might help. So these are in row three. These are in row two. These are in row one. Column seven, column eight, we can't use column nine. And these are all in box three. Ah, so I can actually put three in those cells, but I now have to take it out of these cells because they would be using up the snake cell for row three and for column three, and we're not allowing that. So this one is green, which is interesting. It doesn't have any candidates, only three or nine. Are candidates. We're not allowing it to be three because it's in row three in box three and it can't be nine. So the snake can't go, can't get into these two cells. So they're green as well. Let's get rid of the candidate numbers. They're not necessary once it's green. Now here's another little thing. The snake can't go through this cell because it would have to go direct up to this cell and that would be two sevens in the same column on it. So it doesn't go through there, that's green. It doesn't get us very far. Um, I can't rule the same about this because uh, Knowledge Bomb from Kraken Crypt Cryptic, snakes can wiggle, so it wouldn't have to go through the eight cell above. It could go that way. Ah, oh, this is, I mean, I'm, you're probably seeing things that I should have been able to deduce and I'm not, but. Honestly, I'm going to take my time. I don't think this is easy at all to understand this logic. Um, ah, if I knew... Right, if the snake came to here, it would have to come direct down here. That would be a 237 triple. So this couldn't be a seven. So if the snake comes to either of these cells, they can't be sevens. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't replicate that, I don't think, in column eight for the same sorts of reason as logic. Oh, where does nine go? Ah, interesting, nine in this column can't be in this box. Now it's not ruled out of this cell by the digits because it's white. It's ruled out by this nine. Then in the purple cells we know they're on the snake and nine can't be there because it wouldn't be friendly. So nine in this column can't be in those. It's up in one of those two and that forms an x-wing. The nines for rows one and two are used up in those cells. So nine for column seven must be here. Now, I hadn't ruled it out of this cell before, 
even though it's not in those candidates, it's a white cell, but I have now. Nine is here. Ah, it's not on the snake, because this is row three, column seven, box three. So that's green. Ah, oh, bingo. So the snake comes through this cell, which is an eight. So I'm going to take eight out of all of those cells. This is now green. It's got no snake candidates. That's purple. These are green because the snake doesn't need or have the ability to go there anymore. Uh, so I take out the candidates. Remember what I'm doing. Come on. Okay. This is a triple with one of these, either that or that, and it's a four, five, six triple. They're the only numbers available. I don't know what that's telling me, but it must be telling me something. Yes, I'll tell you what it's telling me. One of these is a four. It's a four, five, six triple on the snake. One of those is the four. The four isn't a candidate for those. So one of those is the four on the snake, and this is therefore a three. That takes three out of all these cells, and this one goes green, and now we know where the snake is down here. It's in those cells. We know what numbers they are. Let's start there. Four, seven, now that's a two. This, we can take out all the pencil markings. That is green. This is not a four now, so it's green, because there's no snake candidates. This is purple. And it doesn't resolve what these are, weirdly, but it's finished off a lot of the snake path down here. Oh, I might have colouring the heads and tails, and I've forgotten that. Um, oh, we've got a one on one end and a nine on the other. A nice coincidence. Now, can I say one of these is a five? Yes. This is a four, five, six triple on the snake. So one of those is a five. And that's not. That's a four. So this is a six. Oh, we're getting Mr. Snakey filled in with numbers now. This is a naked single five. Sees all the other numbers in its column or box. This is now a two nine pair. Um, this sort of stuff is probably not gonna help me. Three or six, three, four or six there. I would love to reduce this to regular Sudoku and start ignoring these weird white candidates, uh, white cell candidates. What about six? Six is going to be full. F yeah, no, I don't know. One of those is four. One of those is five. One of all of these is six. I don't think that tells me how to resolve this. Ah, we need a two in row two on the snake. One of the snake cells must be a two in row two. That's one of these two, and that's not a two. So that's resolved nine. So this can't be a seven anymore because we have a real seven there. That does not make this a two, three pair. I have to be so careful here because of that being white. Okay, so that doesn't quite clear up the confusion here. Now we have a three, five, one, six in some order path. Don't know whether we're using... Oh no, that can't be a one. We earlier resolved that one on the snake's in one of those two cells. So that can't be a one. So this is a two, three, seven path. But it could still go through there. Or here. If it goes through here, that's a... Se oh, this is the only candidate seven. Yes, that's helpful. This is two, three, seven as a triple. And this is the only one that can be a seven. So that is a seven. Now, because of the grey dot, this isn't a six. So that's a one. This is not a one now. We can't use that cell, or we'd have to go through this cell and they'd both be five, which is all kinds of nonsense. So that's green. The five is on the snake. Oh, this is purple and must be a six. This can't be a six. So here again, I think we have this issue. This is a six, three, five triple. Oh, that's gone purple. So this is green, of course. The snake can't touch itself. Don't be a naughty snake and try and touch yourself. Three, two, this one I can remove all the pencil marks from now, I think. And we've got, 
I still can't finish it off. I must be able to finish it off. There's something I'm not thinking about. Um, we need a five. Okay, let's just have a look at what we've got. One, two. We're going to get a three in row three, a four in row four, a five there, six, seven, eight, nine in the rows. In the columns, one, two, three, four. We're going to get a five, six, seven, eight, nine. In the boxes, one, two, three, four, five. We're going to get a six somewhere. Seven, eight, nine. Oh, okay, that didn't yield anything. Okay, let's do Sudoku. Better at that than snake thinking. This is four or eight. Um, seven, three, two, nine, eight. Right, so one of these is a six. So these can't have a six. So one of these is a six. Oh, this can still be on the path. Um, come on. Oh, this has become a five now. Right, that's the only candidate. So this can't be a five. This puzzle works so strangely. Now five can't be in those cells for ordinary purposes. So we've got a five. We've got, well, we place one in this box. One. We've got a four, six pair. And this can't be a four anymore. It's not on the path. It's got no candidates. So we finished the snake. Well, we finished the path of... Oh, no, we haven't. I've still got that to do. Um, I'm going to finish off these numbers. Still got this 3-5 pair to create here. I'm sorry if I should be able to see how that works. I can't. Um, 7 there. 1 and 5. We finished that column. We've got... Yes, 2 is naked there. That gives us a 3 down here. Six is naked there. We get a two, four pair. This is happening now. This has been an incredible ride. Absolute roller coaster on the snake. Um, that can't be a six. This can't be a three. That's very helpful. Six, one, three there. This is now eight. One, three. Uh, this can't be six, so that's three, four, six pair fixes the two, four over here. Oh, bother. That is a two, seven pair. This is a one, five pair. I can do those. One, five. This is a nine, three pair. Um, I don't know. Let's just keep doing Sudoku. Six is there in the central box. That is seven or nine, which isn't all that helpful. Um, oh, one has been resolved over here. That's nice. One, three, three, one of those. Ah, three is in one of those two cells for the snake. So I can actually place it in box one. Oh, this can't be a five because of that five. Ha <laughs> ha, green. Go away, candidate fives. And we now know the last cell of the snake. And this is on a three five pair. So that's where the five goes. And that's the three. And that finishes Mr. Snake. Snick, if you like. Um, that, oh, hang on. I, I was trying to type a five and I typed a six. That's better. Four, six, and seven. Seven. We must be able to finish this now, assuming it has a unique solution. Yes, look, that's a weird naked single because of the four eight pair, one six five three seven nine in the row. That's a two, so we can actually finish the row off. That eight looks up to the four. That's going to fix the last column. This three. That three is resolved, this pair. Two is resolved, this pair. That's become a seven. We must be able to write in eight and what is it, nine. We've got a two seven over here. Five, nine. Oh, this is happening now. Box one to go. Six and seven, eight and five. And what a brilliant puzzle that is. Absolutely fascinating. And there is... Mr. Snake, 192748564312536132846597899. And there are 
boxes with five cells, there are columns with five cells, there are rows with five cells. So one of my theories was nonsense, but it was a very important idea. First of all, well, I mean, I think the biggest idea I had there that helped was the maximum length of the snake being the minimum number of friendly cells. No, the maximum number of friendly cells being the minimum length of the snake. And I presume that's how Philip set it up. And it is a very clever puzzle. Goodness knows how he found an arrangement of friendly cells in a snake. Brilliant. Brilliant stuff. Really entertaining. Hope you had a go at that one. My goodness. But um, I very much hope to see you again on the channel soon. Bye for now. Bye.